And joining me now is Paul Delaney, Professor Emeritus of Physics and Astronomy at York University. And Paul, where are you right now with your backdrop? Is that the moon? <laughs> oh, I could say that I'm on a distant planet, but I'm actually... <laughs> and, so, I'm actually and some people wouldn't style. argue with you, would they? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all right, let's, let's talk about this little, this little second moon we're getting. It's not really that big, but it's kind of fun to have. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's only 11 meters, as you said. It's very, very tiny. Haven't got a hope of seeing it except with big, big telescopes. It's not the first time we've had a mini moon join us. This has happened, well, in fact, it happens continuously uh, several times per decade, but we've only begun to notice them over the last sort of 20 or 30 years. They are transient events. As you said, this one will be with us for a couple of months. It's part of what we call the Arjuna asteroid belt. So it's a set of asteroids, at least half a dozen that we are aware of, that orbit the sun in an orbit that is very, very similar to the Earth. And that's what allows this asteroid to sort of sneak up quietly on us, get reasonably close, get caught by the Earth's gravitational field, but not strongly enough for it to become a permanent resident. And then, as you said, in November, this one will pass back into the Arjuna belt. And how close is it going to get? And uh, do we have to worry about other ones like it? Uh, even though the this asteroid is part of what we call the near-Earth object family, this one really poses no threat to us whatsoever. Apart from the fact that it's only 11 meters in diameter, it would be lucky to survive atmospheric entry. Uh, these asteroids are in an orbit that really never are going to collide with the Earth. They're going to be perturbed by the Earth, but they're never going to be uh, brought crashing to the ground. So, no, we need not worry about this one. And as I said, uh, the other size in particular is the important thing, not tens or hundreds of metres in diameter where you do have to become somewhat more concerned. This one's only 11 metres. OK, nerd question for me. How do we figure out when, these going, when they're going to come into our orbit? How can, how can you calculate that from something that's millions of miles away? Well, that's actually a very good point. Uh, there is a uh, th this one in particular was caught by the Atlas Observatory in South Africa, which is designed to look for these near Earth objects. So it's scanning the skies continuously, and after you pick up these little points of light that are moving, you are actually able to determine an orbital calculation. Uh, sorry, the, the orbital parameters from the calculation. In this particular instance, the moment they realised it was going to get that close, we of course started paying much more attention to it. But the short answer is monitoring them continuously allows us to do the orbital calculation. And that's in turn allowed us to say it's an Arjuna asteroid. Let's not worry about it. But let's keep an eye on it because, of course, it's going to be relatively close, less than a couple of million kilometers for a couple of months. Even though you can't see it with backyard observatories, the big telescopes will have an opportunity to get some really good data and therefore increase our understanding of asteroids in general. And any idea before we're almost out of time, but any idea when we might have the next visitor? Probably within the next five years, but we haven't found the next visitor yet because they're so small and they just sort of sneak up on us, but probably within the next five years. All right, Paul, always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome.